All right, Shalom. There's a brother in the hall here from the gym, Mr. Orlando Kim. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquat, who are believing this word, in all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Bahashim is in the name, Rukha is spirit, Kodash is holy, Akyam is brothers, Akwat is sisters. Shalawan means peace, and Yashar Allah is Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. All right, I want to go into a lesson through the spirit on the divine intellect, you know. And what I mean by that is that the, the Heavenly Father's intellect is the source of all intelligence and understanding. You know, uh, I want to start with the etymology of intellect before I continue. It says the sum of the cognitive facilities except sense or sense and imagination. It says the capacity for reasoning truth and uh, the deception that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, has put out in the earth is that human intellect has created God. That we needed a a God, we, we put God as a placeholder for things we don't understand. And it's actually the opposite. Our intellect comes from a source. This is why the Lord exhorted us thousands of years ago not to lean into our own understanding. You know, but it's the pride and the arrogance of Esau. He disguises his pride as, as a progress. That we've now outgrown the idea of God. As the scriptures say he would. All right. But when you truly understand the nature of the Heavenly Father concerning what he's revealed unto us, you understand you're operating with a. You're dealing with a power beyond your, your own comprehension. All right. Let's go into some scriptures, Lord willing. So this is Psalms 147. And I want to start at the top. All right. We're going to get to all of me. It says, praise ye the Lord. For it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is calmly. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and great and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Now, this is important through the spirit because the world has this idea of the Heavenly Father as a, a fairy tale, as another myth among the ancient civilizations. But there's no way to explain certain things that, that happen in the scriptures that are mentioned in the scriptures. The heavens being spread like a, a garment mentioned in the scriptures before they knew about the expanding universe. You know, the uh, the fountains of the deep is another example that now science is discovering because science doesn't create anything. They discover things that have already been there. Electricity has always been here. They discovered it. And in the end, they're going to find out that they're operating, you know, with with a piece of the spirit of the Heavenly Father. You know, the intellect that these people think that they have, the pride that they have because of what they think is intelligence and, and knowledge. They don't understand that it all comes from a source. This scripture says the Lord's understanding is infinite. Now, when you read this in the NLT. All right. This is Psalms 147 and five in the NLT. It says, how great is our Lord? His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. You can't put Yahweh Bashim in a box. And when you try to put the Heavenly Father inside of your three pound brain and make him and, and, and try to imagine that that's all he can do, you're going to bug yourself out. And this is exactly what Esau's done. That's why in his heart, he don't believe that there is a God because he has a God complex. The scriptures say a fool has said in his heart. There is no God, because with everything that you see around us in nature, our very existence should give testimony that there is a God, but it shows you the pride of Esau Edom. All right, now let's continue. Let's go, uh, let's go here. 
This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. I'm going to start at verse 15. All right, it reads, The Most High hath granted me to speak as I would, and to conceive as it is meet for the things that are given me, because it is he that leadeth unto wisdom and directeth the wise. Man, for in his hand are both we and our words, all wisdom also and knowledge of workmanship. And the beauty of the Lord is that he made everything simple when you look at the scriptures. And that's the deception for this world. Because it's not according to, to man's wisdom concerning enticing words and ten dollar words. No. The genius of it is in, in the simplicity. And the Lord used men that are perceived to be ignorant to give his message. That's intentional. The world is going to find out, man. They they dealing with a power that they really don't understand, man. Like it says in John, the fourth chapter, you worship, you know, not what. And we only speak to a spark concerning the Lord's works. It hasn't been given to us to, con to declare all the Lord's works. But the things that are revealed are humbling, man, because you truly understand that you're dealing with a power beyond your very comprehension. You can't. It's no learning that you can do in, in this body that's going to give you a true, proper understanding of the Heavenly Father concerning all that that he encompasses. That's why the scriptures say in some he is all. How can you magnify him as he is? All right, matter of fact, since I'm in Wisdom of Solomon, I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon 13. I'm going to start at the top. Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1 reads, Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the Most High and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master. Like if you look at creation and you zoom out and, and then zoom in, right? Because if you just deal with the ocean, just the ocean by itself and all the intricacies that come with the ocean, you have men that are men and women, too. We'll throw them in there, too, that have spent their entire life studying the ocean. People who have spent their entire life studying one portion of creation and they still can't get to the end of it. Every time they make a more powerful microscope, they find something even smaller than a cell. Whether you zoom out or zoom in, there is really, Esau can't get to the end of it. Even when you deal with the universe, the scriptures, man, the, the Esau says that, uh, you know, whenever he gives these estimations of the planets and the stars, that's what he can observe. There's a point he can't see past, and even he's willing to admit that. The world has no idea, man. And the Lord gave this understanding to men that are perceived to be ignorant in this world, man. And that's the beauty of it. It wasn't given to the, the ones that are regarded as wise in this world, man. I want to go here real quick. Because the Lord's spirit is in all things, man. All things. Matter of fact, let's go here. And with, with all creation, every piece of creation, you get a glimpse of the Lord's intelligence. You get a glimpse of the Lord's style. All right. Matter of fact, Wisdom of Solomon 13, I'm going to jump down to four. All right. And it reads, but if they were astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them. Man, the Lord get down in the details. You know, you think about the scenery, the winter. And how the winter looks in certain places. Postcard worthy. You know, you come, you get, you zoom into the, the feathers of a bird and how they're colored. And how it's, it's, it's matching. The colors on the bird, is, it's, it coordinates. The aesthetics of it. Then you find out the use of the animal. How it relates to its environment. And then you start to understand, and this is just a small example of how deep the Lord is. And that's why it's, it's beautiful, man. It's, man, this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 5. It says, for by the greatness and beauty of the creatures, proportionably the maker of them is seen. 
Because again, the works that we see, the Lord is far greater than his works. You know, the Lord is perfection without effort. Everything the Lord does is perfect. He don't have to, he don't have to try. He just does it. And it's perfect. It's even the spirit that the Lord put in the earth for them to not even believe. And that's meant to accomplish prophecy as well. All right, because let's go here. Let me get an example of that. This is Isaiah chapter 45. And it's cold, right? Because even the, the spirit of unbelief came from the Heavenly Father. He, he blinded the world. When you look at it. All right, this is Isaiah 45. I'm going to get to the point in verse 15. It says, Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. And see, that's that's the conclusion they're going to they're gonna come to when all is said and done. You know, remember, prophecy is going to catch most people unaware. The day of the Lord is going to catch most people unaware. Who the Lord's people is, is going to catch them unaware. It's going to catch them off guard. The strangeness of the salvation. The Lord making uh, the, the boldness manifest concerning them that fear him. It's beautiful when you look at it because the world is dealing with a power they can't truly comprehend and understand. But the Lord has has given you the ability to understand. And that's a gift. You know, like we just read in Wisdom of Solomon in the seventh chapter. It's the Lord that leads to wisdom. Matter of fact, ooh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 17. I'm going to go here. It's so Ecclesiastes chapter 17, and I'll start at 5. All right, and it reads, They received the use of the five operations of the Lord, and in the sixth place he imparted them understanding, and in the seventh speech an interpreter of the cogitations thereof. Counsel and the tongue, and eyes, ears, and a heart gave he them to understand. With all, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and showed them good and evil. And see, this is the pride of man. They think that they did it themselves. Chiefly Esau, he think he got where he is by his own volition, by his own might. And the Lord is about to humble him greatly, man. Like it says in Wisdom of Solomon 13, they shall not be pardoned for this. All right, continuing, verse 8, he set his eye upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. And it's something about seeing a, a animal, you know, a scene, a scenery, you know, the Netherlands or the Holland or someplace and just seeing the scenery. And it, it just gives you this amazement and reverence for Yahweh by Shem Shah. These so-called, uh, you know, I can't even say so-called because when they, when they make certain scientific discoveries, it's the Lord. You know, we ain't talking about the science falsely so-called, like the Big Bang Theory. But when they talk about uh, microorganisms and they, they purpose and they roll, it gives you this amazement at the Heavenly Father that he thought about all the details. And he's really, truly a power beyond our understanding, man, and it's humbling. All right, continuing at yeah, verse 9, says, He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever, that they might declare his works with understanding. Because the humble, the contrite, Lord willing we be a part of that number, understand that the Lord is mightier than us, that he's more intelligent than us, that he's He's far beyond our comprehension. And that's who the Lord's revealed himself to. He hasn't revealed himself to uh, these Harvard professors, these uh, so-called uh, reverenced scientists with these PhDs and doctorates. No, he's revealed himself unto his people, beginning with the elect of his people. That's why when the Lord says, you know, he's a he's the God of Jacob, he's the God of Israel is it's powerful and it's important because we're not talking about anybody. This is the entity. This is the source of life. And out of all the people on the earth, he chose a nation of people. It's when it's all said and done, man, the. Man, the conclusion of this matter is going to be beautiful when the world catches up. And your scriptures say the Lord gave us to marvelous in his in his marvelous acts. Matter of fact, I'm going to get it again. Please ask a 17 
and nine, he gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever, that they might declare his works with understanding. And in the kingdom, we really going to be able to declare the works with understanding because we're going to get that, that spiritual upgrade. But when you think about the world today and how they operate and how they talk about the one they ignorantly call God, they come from this place of, of arrogance, man. Even when you deal with Christianity, the idea of you choosing God as if the Lord is on your menu, like he's, you know, let's go here. And that's another reason prophecy is so important because it's really going to show the power of the Heavenly Father that the Lord stood above time and before it happened, the Lord spoke it. All right, this is 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. And see, the world don't think the Lord is a power of knowledge. They think the Lord is a fairy tale, a figment of their imagination. Picture that. But the Lord's about to, he's about to reintroduce himself in a great way. And it's going to be through judgment. But then they're going to know prophets have been among them. And that those prophets held the counsel of the Heavenly Father in their mouth. Matter of fact, let's go here. This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 and verse 17. And it reads... For when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, thou showest thy strength. And among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. See, the intellect of the Lord is far beyond men, but the Lord's about to show out, man. Because the Lord's will and his agenda is being spoken on all the highways and hedges of every major city, but they don't regard it. But when it happens, they're going to know that the Lord ruleth in the kingdom of men. The pride of Esau is going to be brought low because Esau thinks he's the highest intellect in the universe. All right, let's go back to that word intellect. All right, it says, again, intellect. I'm going to jump down toward the middle. It says, uh, the capacity for reasoning truth. Now, when you jump further down, it says discernment. Right? It says discernment, a perception, understanding. And the world has this idea that their understanding is deeper than the Lord's, man. It's not. It's not. But even that idea, that arrogance, is going to be brought low, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Washa. All right, now, at the bottom of this, it says to understand, discern. All right, the Latin word was used to translate Greek nos, mind, thought, intellect. And there is no knowledge above the Heavenly Father. There is no no intelligence outside of the heavenly father everybody is subject to the spirit of Yahweh Shah because his spirit is in all things see when our forefathers were given the inspiration you know from the heavenly father to write the scriptures things were put in a simple way so we could understand it but Esau in his arrogance takes that simplicity for for make believe but that's why prophecy is so important and beautiful because it's going to shake the foundation of this world and their understanding. All right, matter of fact, let's go here. It's Isaiah chapter 55. And I'm going to jump down to verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts And let him return unto the Lord And he will have mercy upon him And to our God For he will abundantly pardon Jumping down it says For my thoughts are not your thoughts Neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord For as the heavens are higher than the earth So are my ways higher than your ways And my thoughts than your thoughts Man The world is about to find out though you know, as the scriptures say, surely thou art a God that hideth himself, hideth thyself, you know, the world about to find that out, man. People think they so fucking smart. Excuse my French, especially Esau. So arrogant and pompous with the little bit of things that the Lord has revealed unto him. Now, the scriptures say he's wiser than the children of light because he's done a diligent search. So there's certain things that he knows 
more than the children of Israel. There's certain things that have been revealed unto him through his own diligent search. But as far as the faith and the foundation of, of understanding, it's been given to the elect. That's why scriptures say they that fear the Lord understand all things. Matter of fact, let me get this. It's Proverbs 28 and 5 says evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. We don't have to study the ocean for 30 or 40 years. You know, we don't have to study the zebra or the African landscape for 40 years just to get to a conclusion that it might be a God. The Lord put it in the spirit of the elect without having to go through all of that. That's why, you know, when you look at it, all things have been done for the elect's sake. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. Those people who study the ocean for 30, 40 years, they may have did that just for a paragraph that a brother used in their video. And their whole lifetime was spent really just for that paragraph to be given to one of the, uh, the elect brothers to bring out to the flock. Because everything Esau think he know, the Lord not impressed with that. You know, at the same time, the Lord is patient. And we learning that too, man. That's why this is a master class in judgment that we learning from Yahweh by Shema Ushai. You know, scriptures say the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. Even though these people say all type of wicked shit about the Heavenly Father. All type of doubt. Yet the Lord is patient, chastening them little by little. But when that big blow come, it's going to come and there's not going to be any mercy in that day. Because this is what they did with the, the mercy of the, the Heavenly Father. This is what they did with that grace period. And the world is going to find out they're not, they not as smart as they think they are, man. All right, so Lord willing, matter of fact, let's get this. I'll end it with this. This is Proverbs 21. I'm going to jump down to verse 30. Yeah, verse 30, and it reads, There is no wisdom nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. All right, and the world is going to find that out through demonstration. Hey, so with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aqwal, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.